These are five tips for filmmakers to improve your audio. We've all heard that audio is half your movie, but we usually spend a lot less than half of our money on audio equipment and a lot less than half the time and attention to preparing and recording audio on set. So here, coming from an audio background, I will try to make a list how we can easily and cheaply improve sound recording. While this is not exclusively made for filmmakers, I will focus on the parts that are most relevant for movie production and use comparisons that will cater to this way of thinking. First, we need to understand how sound is captured. Technically, there are four major components in a sound recording. First, you have the sound source from which the sound waves travel through the air. Second, those sound waves are converted into an electrical signal by a microphone. Third, the small electrical signal is ramped up by a preamplifier. And fourth, the signal is digitalized and saved by a recording device. This last step nowadays hardly affects the quality, since even very cheap analog digital converters are pretty good. With that in mind, here are your five tips. The first tip is get your mic closer. Just like light, a traveling sound wave follows a 1 over r squared law. That means that if you have your mic three feet away from your subject instead of just one, only one ninth of the signal strength will reach your microphone. This is way more important than the quality of the microphone you actually use, as can be seen, or rather heard, in this exaggerated example. This is me recording into a 30 euro condenser lavalier mic attached to my shirt. This is me recording into a 300 euro shotgun mic about 1.5 meters or 5 feet away from my mouth. This is me recording into the 100 euro road video mic about 2 meters or 7 feet away from my mouth. This is me recording into a 2000 euro studio mic about 3 meters or 10 feet away from my mouth. This also means that while the popular Rode video mic series offers pretty passable sound quality, if you use it for production audio and not just for syncing sound, you can seriously improve the quality by buying an extension cable for a few bucks and getting the mic away from your camera and on a cheap mic stand or boom close to your subject. The second tip is use a decent preamp. While there certainly is a difference in recording quality of different microphones, the very good microphones don't come cheap. And far more important for the signal to noise ratio actually is the quality of your preamplifier. Most dedicated recording devices offer a pretty usable preamp, but sadly most DSLRs and camcorders don't. You can hear the vast difference in this example where the same microphone at the same distance is run into three different preamps. So I will talk a little softer so you can hear the noise a little better. This is recording directly into the preamplifier of the Canon T3i. This is recording directly into the XLR input of the Zoom H4n. The preamplification is set to 80 if you also have the same device. This is recording into an audio device on my laptop with Focusrite Class A preamplifiers. This means that if you don't want to use an external audio recorder, it is important to feed a preamplified signal into the camera. This can be done with external preamps, for example by BeachTech or JuiceLink, or with a microphone that includes an internal preamp, like the Rode VideoMic Pro. The third tip is, mind your environment. Would you film in a room where there is a bunch of ugly junk and gear next to your actor? Well, only if that's part of the scene. Just like you are looking around for visually distracting things before shooting, you should try to pay attention to the sound of the room you are filming in. Have everyone be quiet and listen to things you can maybe turn off, like air conditioning, humming lights or a fridge, or that might not be present in the next best location. I have had so many recordings cost me lots of work because of silly background noise. The fourth tip is record room tone. Just like you would need a clean slate if you are recording green screen or other visual effects, you definitely need a room tone recording if you want to do any audio post-processing, like cutting out direction cues or noises from the camera and crew. Real silence is really strange and off-putting in a scene, and you should have at least one minute of recorded room tone to fill in this void. The fifth tip is, use a compressor. Now that we have hopefully captured good production audio, we move into post-production. The human voice has a very wide amplitude range. It can go very soft, but also surprisingly loud. 
Since this is already captured nicely in the sound quality of the voice, we can easily compress the actual signal level to make the very low volume sound a little louder. Most nonlinear editing software will come with a compressor plugin. And if not, you can download one for free on the internet. I apply this to almost every speech recording I have, and it greatly helps the quality and understandability of the track. The three most important parameters you can tweak with all compressor plugins are, first of all, the ratio, which determines the amount of compression. I usually keep it around 4 to 5 for spoken words. Second, the threshold. Very low sounds under this threshold will not be amplified as much, so you can use it to get rid of a background hiss that might become too pronounced after compression. And third, the auto gain. This is sometimes just an on-off switch, sometimes you can set a value. It tells the compressor that it should keep the output gain at a given maximum level, usually zero decibels, and you should always keep it turned on. There are certainly a lot of additional things that can help you improve your audio, but in my experience these are the five most important ones. If you disagree with me or would like a certain part of the video explained in more detail or extended upon, please let me know in the comments.